Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and this is the third episode of my SRP podcast. And in this episode, I wanted to tackle a topic that I get asked about all the time, and that is basically about my love-hate relationship with Gran Turismo. So, as I mentioned in my How Did We Get Started in Sim Racing video, I talked about how Gran Turismo was one of my jumping points into the world of sim racing. I, as a kid, got to try out Gran Turismo 3 that I won in a competition, and that sort of sparked my love for racing games, even though I did get into sim racing through Papyrus NASCAR Racing 1999 when I was younger. So with Gran Turismo being in that sort of special spot in my heart, it's kind of sad where I don't really race in GT Sport or really reminisce too fondly about GT and just sort of have moved on from it and jumped on to other titles. So I kind of wanted to take this sort of episode to sort of talk about my love for GT Sport, how it progressed, and then just sort of how GT and I grew a little distant and almost in a sense, it's kind of like a relationship, sort of just where two people go and grow distant and just become apart. So it's an interesting thing to talk about. It's interesting to talk about how I've just not really gotten into that element of that side of the spectrum as much anymore and just have progressed to other racing titles and also mainly the PC side of sim racing. So yeah, guys, this is gonna be an interesting journey. I hope you will ride along with me and just sort of understand what I'm talking about because I know a lot of people are mad that I just don't really race in Gran Turismo or even Forza as much as maybe I used to, but ultimately it just boils down to personal preference and just kind of losing interest in it. So yeah. Uh, Let's begin with this. So to start off on this journey, I am going to go all the way back to when I was a little kid. So I am going to be rehashing some of the stuff talking about how I got my start in sim racing and yeah, but hopefully this will help augment the story and talk about how my love for racing games and just this hobby really kicked off. So when I was about six years old, my dad bought NASCAR Racing 1999 season, and that was my first true taste in the world of sim racing. And through that, I was just really awakening to this side of the realistic racing game. Prior to that, I had games such as Macho Truck Madness and Macho Truck Madness 2. I played the Motocross Madness demos, Midtown Madness, most of those Microsoft published racing games those were largely what I was into. So getting my taste of this new NASCAR game and sort of seeing the more realistic side of the spectrum, it's like getting that first sip of soda when you're a kid and you just latch on to that taste and you really get into it. And I had my taste and then I didn't really know where to look for that. So. Afterwards, I just sort of progressed in my little kid and just down that journey. And I just really became into the racing games as a whole. So I remember also playing games such as Star Wars Episode One Racer. I was hooked on that and I just really enjoyed that. I remember I would go from school over to my friend Mark's house and we would play Star Wars Episode One Racer on his Nintendo 64. And back then I was a PC exclusive gamer. I was PC Master Race all the way. I was raised that way as a kid and I actually didn't get my first console until I was nine years old. And even then it took me getting hit by a car and just cracking my collarbone and my parents got me a Game Boy Advance to just shut me up and distract me and just, yeah, the typical stuff a parent would do for a nine-year-old who's in pain. 
So yeah, with that being said, I strictly was on the PC side, and I did get the PC version of Star Wars Episode One Racer, and I also fondly remember the Hot Wheels stunt track racer games. And it was more like just an interactive FMV video with some scripted events, and ultimately it was a pretty cheesy game, but hey, I have some really fond memories of that as a kid. So those were the kinds of games that I was playing as a little kid. And then come roughly 2004, 2005, I was actually frequenting this local video store called More Video. And it was run by a close family friend, and actually my sister was dating the son of the owner for a little while, but I always would go by there after school and just kind of hang out. They had this area where you could play video games. And then one day they had this competition, and the competition was to play Crash Team Racing. You got an hour, and the furthest you get in the game would basically be your score. So I actually was playing the game and I did a little bit of studying and strategy and trying to at least get an idea on how to play before I jumped into it. And then actually I got second place in the competition. But first place, he ended up actually, I think using cheat codes or something that got him further in the game and he actually didn't get caught. And I was pretty ticked off because actually the first prize for the game was a mini bike. It was one of those mini motorcycles that you could ride around. It was one of those electric things. Second prize wasn't as exciting, but it was pretty cool as well. You could pick any game from the store and you could keep it. So I got second prize and then I actually picked out a game called Eve of Extinction. EOE. And that was a pretty cheesy game. It was one of those ones where you have these multitude of different weapons. It had a very weird plot twist where the weapon actually was the soul of your girlfriend imbued into this object. So it was really weird. I ended up beating it in about a week, week and a half. So I go back and I found out two things. First, the guy who got first prize wrecked his mini bike and broke his leg. So I found that almost a funny bit of karma or whatever. So I was like, huh, fun, neat, whatever. I, I don't mean to wish people getting hurt, but it's like, I was a little kid and I was just like, okay, he got his just desserts. So after that, I told them, yeah, I beat the game. And uh, my family friend who ran the store said, okay, bring it back and you can pick out another game. So I brought the game back, looked through everything they had, and I saw Gran Turismo 3. And it was the cover that had that Nissan yellow Super GT car on the back cover. And I was like, that's a pretty cool car. So I picked up the game and they said, yeah, sure, you can have it. So I took it home put it in my PlayStation 2, and I was like, where has this been all my life? So I jumped into the world of Gran Turismo 2, and I just got hooked. I was grinding away at it for days, making enough money. I just vividly remember just modding a Mazda Miata to just be able to handle racing on the oval circuit, and at that point, I would just grind that track combo to actually get enough money for the Dodge Viper. And when I got that car, I was like, heck yes. I was almost feeling like I had peaked as a kid. So with that being said, honestly, I kind of put it down after that. I didn't jump into GT3 as much. And then a few months later, I had heard about Gran Turismo 4. So I looked into Gran Turismo 4 and I got it over, I believe, at Game Crazy, for those of you who can remember that. So I bought the game at Game Crazy and then also I heard about the Mad Cat's MC2 wheel. And that wheel was compatible with the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and the GameCube. And 
I had recently also gotten an Xbox. So when I got the Xbox, I also discovered Forza Motorsport. So I was able to use that same wheel on Gran Turismo and Forza. So while I was progressing on Gran Turismo 4, I was also dabbling a little bit in Forza. And if I'm perfectly honest, I was starting to find myself more appealing to the Forza side of things. I thought the car customization was quite a bit better. I liked the modification elements. I liked all of that element where you could just make the car your own. Yeah, in GT4, there were those car customization elements where you could change the rims. I believe you could also add a wing to the rear, but you couldn't really customize the cars nearly as much as you could in Forza. And also, I just felt that the track selection was a little better. I jumped from PlayStation to Xbox largely, and then from there, I went from Xbox to Xbox 360. So with the Xbox 360, I jumped into Forza Motorsport 2. And that game, I got hooked on. I just remember turning countless laps on uh, Laguna Seca. And actually on my old Facebook profile, I still have pictures. And one of my favorite pictures I ever took in Forza Motorsport 2 was one of the Nissan GTR Super GT going down the corkscrew at uh, Laguna Seca. And I just loved it. And also I loved the fact that you could inject your own soundtracks into the games. I just loved being able to race in Forza, Rally Sport Challenge with my own music. And that was a blast. So. Even from then, I just started distancing myself from Gran Turismo. And then I heard about Gran Turismo 5 and also Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. And when I bought my first PlayStation 3, I really, really got into uh, Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. And I became the total, total GT fanboy at that point. I remember registering for the GT Planet forums and actually I almost got myself banned once from GT Planet where I made this exciting post talking about a new trailer and then I uh, showed the trailer which was a Rick Roll and I think I got one or two strikes from that post alone. And it was just kind of funny. But at that point, I almost totally abandoned Forza Motorsport in favor of Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. Not even the full game. GT5 Prologue. And also at that point was also when I got one of my first serious sim racing wheels. And that was my Logitech G25. So my, I, I talked about my wheel history in my previous video where I went from a Logitech Momo to a Logitech Driving Force GT. So technically you might be able to call that my first serious wheel. Had the 900 degrees of rotation, had the shifter, had a half decent two pedal set. But I'd call my Logitech G25 when I really started to become serious about sim racing. It had the leather hand stitched wheel, it had the H pattern shifter, had the clutch pedal, and I just sunk into GT and just freaking loved it. And also, at that point, I was dabbling a little in the PC side of sim racing, but ultimately, I still found myself gravitating more towards Gran Turismo, more towards Forza Motorsport, and I just really became entranced by those titles. And then GT5 came out and I sunk so much time into it. I really dove deep into it, but at the same time, I actually never beat it. Uh, the story mode in it was just so grinding. You had to grind and grind and grind. And once you unlocked the first endurance race, 
you had to kind of run the equivalent of that race 10 or 15 times in order to get to the next endurance race. And it's just, it got to me. It really did because Gran Turismo 5 was a truly, truly excellent racing game. Like Even when you sort of take the premium and standard cars into account. And just with that, I found the races enjoyable. I found the cars enjoyable. I found just about everything about it I loved. But at the same time, I just was kind of feeling this emptiness where with Gran Turismo 5, I just found the grind and the monotony once you progressed further in the game to be very detracting because it just found like, or it came off like I really wasn't racing because I was enjoying it at that point. It became, I was just racing to trying to get to the next race. And ultimately, that became a major turnoff for me. And after Gran Turismo 5, I started exploring a little further, seeing what I could do with this Logitech G25 I had. So around that time was when I really started getting into and discovering stuff like inside sim racing. Uh, they really showed off the world of sim racing as a whole. I remember it was roughly uh, 2011, uh, fall of 2011, I think, when I discovered iRacing and I tried that out. And that was another awakening for me because at that time, I didn't really have much of an idea on what online racing could provide. And with that, I still remember some really awesome races I had in the rookie class. I remember, and actually on my personal YouTube channel, I have this old battle I had for second place, I believe, in a Legends race at Lanier, I believe. And that was such a fun battle. Even on an oval track, we were just battling wheel to wheel, even had a little bit of contact, but all in all, it was just a super fun race. And I was getting that feeling that I was missing that I had originally had with Gran Turismo. And it just really sparked this passion in me for the racing, for the racing not to get to the next race, but to race because I freaking love racing. And that just sparked and started this fire in me and really sent me down the rabbit hole. And then a couple of years after Gran Turismo 5 released, Gran Turismo 6 came out. And actually, I have never played Gran Turismo 6 Actually, I might take it back. I think I might have tried it one time at a friend's house. But I have never had that desire to drive in Gran Turismo 6. And that just is a kind of weird thing to say. That a major Gran Turismo title came out. And from what I've heard, it is an excellent, excellent racing game. But I've just had no desire to actually race it. And it's something where I bet someday I'll give it a go as maybe a retrospective video and talking about the last full Gran Turismo game or something like that, but I just don't have this burning desire in me to try Gran Turismo 6. So I also just sort of missed out on that. And then when the PlayStation 4 came out, I was an early adopter of the PS4. I, uh, or maybe not early adopter, I bought the Last of Us Remastered PS4 bundle, which had that very slight revision uh, to it that it wasn't like the PS4 Slim or anything like that, but it had a slightly improved fan. So with that, I started hearing about Gran Turismo Sport, Gran Turismo Sport. And I was thinking, hmm, GT's, or GT on the PS4, I'm willing to give that a go. 
I'd be definitely willing to give Gran Turismo Sport on the PS4 a try. So I waited and waited and I believe I actually did pre-order it and one of the pre-order bonuses with GT Sport were these two fuzzy dice. And these I actually have mounted on my rig and I just call them my lucky Gran Turismo dice. And they're pretty fun. I mean, I like them. They're pretty cool fuzzy dice. And it was nice to have that. But yeah, so I pre-ordered GT Sport and I got it. And I just ultimately felt underwhelmed. I just, after being spoiled by PC titles like a Settle Corsa and even to an extent Project Cars versus Gran Turismo in my opinion. And also Automobilista, uh, R-Factor 2, all these great PC titles. I just felt like I didn't really enjoy Gran Turismo as much. And one of the things that I kind of chalk it down to is I felt this kind of shift in my mentality, this shift in my mindset. When I was younger, one of my mindsets was I want to drive as many cars as possible. I want to check them all out. I had the Pokemon, gotta drive them all mindset. And I just was sucked into that world. I really enjoyed the Gran Turismo, Forza Motorsport, collect-a-thon elements of it. And to a, or to a reasonable extent, I still enjoy it. Uh, sometimes I'll fire up Forza Horizon 3 or 4 now. Uh, to sort of check out these cars and drive them and have some fun with it. I'll launch uh, Forza Horizon 3 with my friend Brayden and we'll give it a go and run and just have some fun with it. Uh, but recently, I feel like I've had less of a focus on how many cars I'm driving, but more of a focus on what I'm driving. I am driving fewer cars nowadays, admittedly, but I feel like the cars I'm driving now are higher quality. They're more enjoyable to drive. I'm not wanting to drive 20 Miatas in Gran Turismo. I want a really, really well done Miata, maybe in a Seto Corsa. And iRacing, I'm not a fan of their Miata, but yeah. So uh, a Seto Corsa Miata, uh, that car I love to drive. I did an SRS championship in it and had a lot of fun with it. But yeah, so it's interesting because I'm not worried as much about the car counts. I'm more concerned about the quality of the cars I am driving. And I feel like that's where a lot of mentalities are going as well. I think there were a lot of people burned by the GT5, GT6 premium versus standard debate and just that kind of divide. And they were realizing, yeah, they want more high quality cars. And that's where I feel like the PC world has it done well. I mean, sure, the cars in Gran Turismo and in Forza Motorsport are modeled exquisitely. They have a very, very, very high quality. But for me, the driving model is off. And it just feels very off-putting for me. And one of the things that really turned me off from Gran Turismo Sport was actually the way that the gas and brake are simulated in those games. So one of the things that I always felt I had a major struggle with in GT Sport specifically was that I had a lot of trouble modulating the throttle and the brake. So I was either pressing it too little or way too much. And it was next to impossible to drive without some sort of traction control. Even set to one. Uh, if I set it to zero, I was spinning up. So I did a little bit of research. And one of the things I noticed is that Gran Turismo Sport has non-linear throttle and brake curves. No matter what wheel and pedal set or controller you're using. So the benefit of a uh, non-linear throttle and brake is to specifically make it less sensitive for a controller user. So with that being said, you're, you have less modulation you can do with the triggers on a PS4 controller. So 
when you have a less sensitive throttle and brake, it makes it somewhat easier to drive. It's the same thing with the steering on the uh, joystick uh, on the controller. So when you are driving with a wheel and pedal though, you want a one-to-one -one linear experience. Uh, with a potentiometer based brake pedal, you want a little bit of non-linearity, you want a little less sensitive to try to make it less brake locky. But ultimately with a load cell brake, with a throttle pedal or even a clutch, you want not or you want a linear experience. You want the linearity of the controller and then with a load cell brake, you want the resistance from the load cell and the springs to make that non-linearity. You don't want artificial non-linearity in that system. So with Gran Turismo Sport though, you have that non-linearity forced on no matter what. So when you are pressing the throttle about 50%, you're only getting about 25, 30% throttle in Gran Turismo. Other titles, you'll be getting 50% all day long. So it's that kind of non-linear curve that makes these issues modulating the throttle and same thing with the brake, making it so difficult to manage. And that, like you'll see in threads talking about how uh, Gran Turismo Sport is a pain to drive with a pedal set at times. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating because I can imagine it's a very simple fix to adjust that. But at the same time, they just don't. I tried it a few days ago, still there, and it's still as much of a pain now as it was when I first fired up GT Sport. And it's irritating, but yeah, like enough of that rant aside, it's just where I've gotten spoiled by the PC driving feel of all these different titles. I've gotten spoiled by Assetto Corsa's driving model, Race Room's driving model, R Factor 2's driving model, iRacing's Automobilista, Automobilista 2. Heck, even Project Cars 2 I see is superior to uh, Gran Turismo and Forza. And it's just, yeah, that kind of shift occurred a few years ago where I just felt like, yeah, I'm focusing more on the driving experience more than the gameplay elements. And at the same time, I would love to see some of the gameplay elements from Gran Turismo making its way into Sims, but ultimately, I feel the driving feel is above the game experience, in my opinion. Because, yeah, uh, I just think that I just prefer the feel of that. And sure, I'll fire up Forza, I'll fire up GT Sport at times, but it just feels like that kind of my relationship with Gran Turismo has sort of run its course right now. It's still a fun racing title and still for the people who truly enjoy it, I, I'm glad it's there for you. But for me, I just feel like I've been ready to move on to the next experiences and those next experiences are ones I have truly enjoyed. So yeah, it's a bittersweet feeling just sort of moving on to that next stage in my sim racing relationships but I at the same time I still have fond memories of the past and fond memories of just my enjoyment of Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo 3 reigniting my love for the realistic racing game, Gran Turismo 4 just was a masterfully done PlayStation 2 racing sim. Uh, Forza Motorsport. Uh, I still have this very fond memory of me watching a replay of Forza and I had my grandmother walk in and she was like, oh, what race is on? And no, she didn't have the best vision, but yeah, it's like she genuinely like enjoyed seeing that and I'm not sure if she was just trying to humor me, but yeah, I would ask her, but she passed away almost seven years ago. So it's one of those just really fond memories I have of my grandmother that I can just hold on to. And yeah, it's those memories that sometimes just remind me of 
how much I love sim racing. And it's just great having those memories, but at the same time, I'm ready to make new ones. I'm ready to just really like, make new memories. And for all I know, Gran Turismo could be getting a major makeover for PlayStation 5. And if it does, I might give it another shot. I want to maybe see what Polyphony Digital has in store for Gran Turismo. Uh, it would be 7. I'm not sure if they'll do GT7 or GT Sport 2 or whatever. I would definitely be interested in seeing what they have up their sleeves. Same thing with Forza Motorsport and Forza Motorsport 8 now, I think. Yeah. But at the same time, I just, I don't really feel much of a desire for going to Gran Turismo Sport again. Uh, but who knows? My mind might change in the future. But yeah, it's interesting reminiscing on this. But at the same time, I'm ready to move on. But yeah, guys, this has been an interesting episode. I would love to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts on the way Gran Turismo has headed over the past few years? Do you feel like you're still in love with Gran Turismo? Or are you just more wanting to move on to the next steps and just dive deeper into the sim racing world? So I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching this episode. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a good one.